Hello, it's me, Kyle, from Give Paws Hobby. We're back with our first tea and pancakes episode in a while now. Um, yeah, and uh, for those of you somewhat new to this uh, creation that I made, tea and pancakes is every five games of root, I come back and I give you the update on where my favorite factions are, my favorite maps, favorite things to, you know, uh, clockwork factions, the pilot, all that sort of stuff. Or in this case, every 10 games, because I was close, I was on the brink of breaking into uh, 40 games, and um, then I had a weekend where I I just played the, the original matchup um, of root bots um, the whole time, and uh, me versus the root bots. And it was... Uh, first of all, really fun weekend, just playing the original four. Um, speaking of which, boop -a doop wearing my root sweatshirt, so head showed off. Um, and just like that, I was over the the threshold for 40 matches. I knew I had an upcoming game on BotBot's Weird Root, um, which we weren't really playing it, we were just piloting the different clockwork factions. That counts, there's a category for that in here. And then I finished it out, my 45th game, um, recently on Tabletop Simulator, kind of getting ready for some Marauder content uh, with the new clockworks and another game of the rats, and we'll get to that a little bit later. So, 10 games of Rooter in, and um, yeah, there have been some shakeups. So. Uh, I, my grand total, I'm up to 54 hours, uh, 56 minutes of this game. Uh, I played at seven locations with 18 different players. Um, yeah, so I played one game, one game of, uh, two, since the last time, of two-player root, uh, three games of three-player root, and six games of four-player root. And, uh, you know, for those who aren't in the know, I am fully... Uh, uh, accepting of games against the root bots. These are games of root. Um, so when I say four players, sometimes that means four actual humans, though not that often these past couple of years. Uh, other times it means one of me and three of the bots. So it is, it is a uh, human or living agnostic. <laughs> like the bots are welcome in my player counts. Uh, in the map section, last time we spoke, I had 28 games of the forest, three in the lake, one in the mountain, three in the winter. Um, I've only played in the forest or the autumn map and the lake since last time. So I'm up to 35 games in the forest, six games in the lake. Um, and again, uh, I did see there, the rules of the mountain. I, I do need to play a mountain map because I have seen more succinct rules for how to use the bots in that recently that I somehow had missed before. So that was why that one is so low because I didn't know how the bots were supposed to use that. And the winter one is so low because I, I, I'm sorry, winter fans, I'm just not that huge a fan of the winter map um, yet. I'm not saying I never will be. Just for right now, it's kind of not there. For landmarks, I have not proxied the landmarks. I totally could, and I might. Um, and now that I am breaking into TTS slowly but surely, or at, you know, at, at least at all, whereas before I just wasn't, they are available. Um, so. I might actually start to see more of these landmarks here as opposed to just the ferry and the tower. But since I played the lake map three times, there are three more of those. I have not played with any hirelings. Um, you know, I have the most, the, the most up-to-date PNPs, which, you know, tragically, ironically, I have played one game with. And I might get another game in with those before the Marauder Kickstarter rewards arrive. Um, if not, I will happily trade them out for the actual ones with the real pawns and everything. Um, so for right now, that has not changed. Um, but on to what I've been piloting. 
let's see, I've used the moles in the 10 games since last time we spoke, I've used the moles three times, uh, Automated Alliance three times, Vagabond four times, Cats seven times, Crows twice, uh, Eerie six times, Riverfolk once, and Lizards four times. Um, okay, so let's start from the, the, the bottom. So, because there's been some changes. Well, actually, no. Let's go from the bottom of ten times ago. There we go. Um, so the river folk. No, sorry. The the uh, lizards were my last, my least favorite faction. Um, and there were some changes as to how the uh, rituals, or not the rituals. Yes, the rituals. It was pretty minor changes. Um, but I actually, I, I should know this. I mean, I have multiple <laughs> series where I talk about the rules of the factions, but in any case, um, I really wasn't excited. I was excited to have them at first. And then the reality of them was just kind of this, like, you know, Gatling gun on a lazy Susan, just like spinning around, attacking the whole map, which is still kind of the case, except... I think the big thing is um, sort of like the Electric Eerie, I have begrudgingly come to understand what it takes to face this enemy, um, which I didn't always understand before. So um, yeah, because if you destroyed their gardens, they remove the top card of their lost souls. And that obviously... Uh, minimizes how often that lazy Susan can spin around and shoot at everybody. So that's a huge thing. Anyways, they've gone from eighth place up to fifth place. That's a pretty big, uh, pretty big margin. They've won one game, played four games. They've won one of them since, uh, since we last spoke. The River Folk were my seventh favorite faction. They have played one game. They did not win it since then. Um, and that's where they're going to stay. They're staying in seventh. And it's, I am not the biggest fan. I love the theme, the idea of the river folk. Um, personally, it's not my, one of my favorite factions. It's pretty far from it. And I think I'm excited to, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not writing this off as saying this will never ever rise in my favor because I thought that of some other ones. But for right now, for what I'm doing, for my purposes, it's a lot of overhead, um, especially because I'm usually at least two-handing bots. You know, I'm piloting two or more of the clockwork factions. And it's just a lot to check with. Um, I think it's, they've done a, you know, Benjamin and, and the, the crew have done a, a wonderful job creating and developing this faction. I think it's really well done for for the challenges it presented, and I think it does a good job of what it does. This this version I think works better than earlier better bot project ones, but I'm just not a, the hugest fan of how much head work it requires. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. So started seventh ten games ago is seventh place now. Electric Eerie, uh, as I said, I played six games of that, and they have won three of them. And they were th uh, sixth place. They are moving on up to fourth. They, uh, yeah, I, I think I was, I don't know why, I was just resistant to fully embracing what it takes to beat the Eerie, which is to go in with laser precision and just wreck house, um, break some roosts and force them into turmoil. And, you know, you kind of know, well, you do know what they're going to do, aside from the one card they're going to draw the next turn. And by the, you know, when I finally came around to that understanding, um, made a big difference. And so, yeah, they made a meteoric rise, which they were next to last, in my opinion, of the bots. So that's why I'm holding out judgment on just about any, no matter how low the bots go, they could come back. Uh, the Clockwork Conspiracy played two games of that. They won one of them. Um, they are down in, they started in fifth place. They are down in eighth place now. Uh, just because I, 
again, I think for for what the faction brought to the table and how it was implemented with the the clockwork version, I think. Uh, oh my goodness! All credit is is, is owed and and deserved of uh, the folks who worked on it. But um, yeah, I'm just I don't know. I just don't doesn't doesn't like scream its own identity to me from the table at least not right now so sorry eighth place uh mechanical marquees i have played seven games of them they won one of them and they came in 10 games ago at fourth place they are now at sixth um now this was uh faithful tea and pancakes faithful uh may already know they were my second favorite clockwork faction of all of them um and I openly admitted they are head and shoulders above all the rest in terms of games played. I openly admitted the reason they were as high as they were was partially due to volume, just the amount of games I've played, and like nostalgia of just that's where I started this whole learning the root bots and really learning root in general. But also ease, like simplicity of, again, keeping that overhead as low as possible so when it's tur the bots turn they just boom they just go and which all of those are true none of that has changed it's still a really easy bot to run however um i found that there are just some weird trends that can sometimes pop up when the the robo cats are in the game and you know just this oh my goodness what is happening? Just this like huge ball of cats and uh, they can get trapped easily. They can get distracted. I, I guess, you know, if we're looking at it like strictly two actual cats, getting distracted easily is a pretty on, on point uh, descriptor. But uh, yeah, I've just, well, you'll see. There are just other ones that I think have... Um, I've gotten more interested in because again like the narrative they tell when you're playing them makes a big difference uh or rather makes a big impact on the on the game so from fourth to sixth uh next up vagabot uh i have played two games with them they did not win either of those uh they went from third favorite to second um so silver medal and i i think this is I don't know. I the Vagabot. I think I mentioned this in my teaching video that it it almost lends itself. It is not the most not the most like low overhead bot. There's actually quite a bit. The text is like reduced so they could fit it all on the the player board. But once you understand the stroke, the broad strokes of it, it's actually not that bad. Um, and I think personally that it fits like the bill of what a bot should be in a game better than pretty much any other faction the cats might be pretty close because it's it's like you know i played a lot of games of spirit island over this spring break it's like the um the invaders in that game just like this f almost faceless entity that you're meant to grapple with and um you know, the cats and the vagabond are the two like ends of the spectrum in terms of table presence, in terms of like army to single unit to, you know, invading force to like Zelda. <laughs> and, um, and I think having, again, like the cats are a good example, but I'm not as, I'm becoming less of a fan of how the bot handles itself. The vagabond, I think does a wonderful job and I mean, it does. It makes some weird decisions um, sometimes, but it's just this like entity that's in the woodland that you can't fully ignore, um, and that every now and then will become like ruthlessly entangled with your plans. And I, th I think it's just really nice. So there we go, silver medal. Uh, Automated Alliance played only. Or no, three games with them. Um, they did not win either any of those games. They went from second to third, so from silver to bronze. And uh, honestly, I think part of that was 
because there's so many rules in root and I don't always get it to the table. Uh, I talk about this in the teaching video to the Automated Alliance, but there is a wording um, discrepancy on the official board. It's not, it's, there's not a rules mistake. It's not like the electric eerie, you know, uh, typo, or not typo, but like bug. Um, it's just the wording of spread sympathy makes it seem that they could spread it to anywhere on the board. Um, and if you take the words really literally and take them in order, um, but th the order is the issue. It's like, anyway, I won't get into it. It's in the video. I've probably put the link here somewhere. Um, yeah, because that makes it feel very different from the normal alliance, which needs to spread all from one direction or, or you know, sympathy begets more sympathy. You can't just like, I'm sympathetic. I am too. <laughs> it has to like spread across the map, which is how it actually is supposed to work. And when it does, then just like the Eerie um, and the Lizards, you can have meaningful impact on it. You can say, well, I, I don't want them going over here, so I'm going to cut off this sympathy and then we're free. And when you do that, then it's actually quite um, uh, engaging. So, you know, I'm sure this loss of stature is a temporary one and not not really earned by the bot itself but by my ignorance and forgetfulness uh, and last but not least obviously the uh i can't i can't remember the the new mole's name i will right now refer to them as the dummy duchy but they started top first of eight uh, 10 games ago. I played three games with them. They didn't win any of them. They haven't won any games that I've played with them in that they're the only bot that doesn't have any dubs on the board, but they are still the top of my heart. They, they have the W on my heart because I think the fact that I, I love, you know, the swaying of the ministers in the actual duchy and um, I think the fact that that translated so perfectly into bot form makes them a more in a more interesting bot than any of the others for that reason the others are what they are you know the vagabonds going to follow these things depending on the suit the eerie is going to follow this this you know structure and the moles don't necessarily need the the first two and this is kind of a newer thing but the first two cards you draw to just like prime the pump to get your first two ministers makes a huge difference in the game. You know, if you get like two blues and you just get the first two, if you get two reds, you're already way far down. If you get another red, you're like at the bottom in the red column. I mean, it's a huge determiner of how the game is going to go. And um, yeah, I, I love, I love games with them in, I think they're really easy ish there's more rules in there that I, I almost every time still need to like squint and look at the board just to make sure i'm doing it right it's not as streamlined as the cats but i think the experience is just uh, it's obviously gold medal worthy whatever that means all right so that was piloting the last category is playing so i'm going to go from bottom to top and tell you where they were where they are now well, you know where they are now because I'm going from where their current ranking is. So Otters, I've only played one game of the Otters and I didn't play any of these 10 games. I'm bad with them. I don't know how to play them. Therefore, they are eighth. Uh, seventh place, <laughs> Cats. I played six games with the Cats uh, total. Two of them in this these 10, 10 plays since then. Didn't win any of them. Um, yeah, I, again, they were higher on my list previously because you know, all those reasons for nostalgia, I, I, icon status or, you know, whatever, but um, I, I'm more interested in playing the other factions. And that's the thing, like, aside from the otters, which I know there are a lot of people who love the otters, and I, this is a me feeling. I've only played them once. Um, but uh, I... These are all like clumped together. This was this is like a giant photo finish. It's not like a spread out, you know, a marathon where people are spreading or like finishing like minutes or dozens of minutes apart. Um, 
seventh place of eight sounds brutal, but it's coming from a place of they're just they're just too close together. They're all too good. Um, all right, next up, birds. Uh, I played one game of them uh, in these ten games, and I won it. Uh, so they moved up. No, just kidding. But uh, yeah, I I had a really good time with the birds, and they are kind of intimidating. I think a big thing is it's a faction that encourages you to think uh, really hard when it's not your turn. And the thing about piloting bots is, no matter how easy it is, like it doesn't matter if it's if you get to the bots' turn, you're like, oh, boom, 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 and you can just like r rifle down the steps. You're still doing something. There's no part of my brain that could be thinking about my turn to when it comes back to me. I know this isn't just about bots, but in my life, these past 10 games, most of them have been. Um, so hopefully I have some opportunities where I can get root to the table with some humans uh, in the not too distant future. And it, you know, I'm sure a bunch of these will shake up quite a bit because it's a totally different game when you can actually think about what you're planning on doing as opposed to just it's your turn, what are you doing right now? Um, so, next up, uh, oh, this isn't eight, right, this is out of 10, so because it has the Marauders in there. So Otters, 10th, Cats, 9th, Birds, 8th, Vagabond, 7th. So at the, uh, they're up one from where they were 10 games ago. I played two games with them and I won one of them. And I just really, again, I think the Vagabond is really interesting. It doesn't scratch the same itch as playing a big army faction or, or even one of the insurgent factions that just has, you know, more than one piece. But I think if you go into the game knowing that and preparing yourself for that, I think it can be really cool. Uh, it's a, obviously quite unique amongst all the other factions. Um, less so than it was, say, two years ago. Um, hint, hint, rats. But, um, I mean, that... There's aspects of like the rats that are vague, but it's it's much more of a horde force than that. It's just like the first one to actually like creep into item territory and you know different the moods and all that kind of strike me a little bit eerie-ish and the the leaders, but also a little bit vagabondy charactery. Um, so, anyways, there we go. Uh, sixth place, crows repping the purple. Um, in sixth place. Uh, I've only ever played two games of the Crows. I've won both of them, so I got that going for me. But again, with most of my games recently being against bots, it's not the way the, the Crows are meant to be played. So, um, did not play them. Um, I suppose I probably could have put the Vagabond above, actually. Um, but, oh well. The list is what it is. Um, Lizards! are in fifth place. Again, played two games with them ever, won both of those games, uh, have not played them in these 10 games. So they're just kind of dropping down because a uh, certain faction made a, a leap upwards. Next up, fourth place, so runner up, just this close to the podium, Badgers. The Badgers dropped a couple spots. Um, I haven't played them. Uh, I've played them in the in the ten games. I have not played them. I've played them four times. They've won twice, and they uh, I really in I, I think is really cool what the the Badgers bring to the game. Um, but again, it is definitely a faction you want to be thinking about when you have downtime. And I'm not going to give you the same explanation the twentieth time in a row. Um, so they were overtaken by a uh, pretty significant leap. The Alliance used to be in sixth place. They are now in third. Um, so I played one game of them in these past 10. So that brings my total to two, and I've won both games with the Alliance. And uh, yeah, I just, I really, I really enjoy, um, I, I haven't I've played them in a, a long time. Um, and I was kind of holding off on them against bots the same way with the crows, except for the crows, I feel like there's a understanding, like, oh yeah, I can I can see why you would not want to do that. With the lions, it's perfectly fine. I mean, you're gonna 
you, you can be smart and put it's it's you're a little bit game in the system um, because you can put yourself in positions where the bot's going to regularly kind of give you cards for moving on your stuff. But um, I think, yeah, what the faction does, I think is really fun. Um, they're adorable and yeah, so bronze medal. Moles, second place. I actually didn't play them in these t past 10 games, which is surprising. Um, but they, when the Badgers moved down, um, the, the moles in my mind uh, did not change f favor. So the, the badgers just sort of left a vacancy and it just like sucked up. And so the moles are in second place um, because, and maybe playing the, the robot version of the moles just made me excited to when I get to play as the moles again because of the uh, ministers. And I think that's a really fun mechanism. Um, and Speaking of not changing, the rats, uh, they're in first place. Uh, I played another game of them. I've only played two, I've won both of the games, but what the rats do I think is super cool. Now, I fully expect this to be a point of contention. Um, you know, my little bit of watching the Root Winter Tournament, uh, or at least following along with it, um, and just people talking about the meta of the game and what the factions are like, IRL. Um, I know that the rats are going to bring a level of anxiety and frustration and uh, and recourse in my games against my friends. Um, against the bots, they. I think it's a really fun faction. It's kind of puzzly. How, how are you going to get those pieces, those items, to get your engine running and then just sweep over the whole board? Um, yeah, it's going to be a really antagonistic because the, the bots don't prioritize. They don't understand what's going to happen. You know, one one mob piece in a clearing doesn't trip their like robot sensors so much as opposed to a human who's like, yes, it's just one thing. However, it's in a clearing with a ruin, so they're going to get an item next turn or whatever it may be. But um, I think it's a fantastic faction. I'm really excited for it to. It's been in my collection, you know, PNP file for a while now, um, but I just haven't played against people for the most part in a while. So I'm excited for when, uh, hopefully, the actual version and me getting this back to the table with friends are going to coalesce and that will be a faction that I or others can choose and then we see what happens. But anyways, that's uh, Team Pancakes. I did not expect it to be as long as it probably turned out, but I was just excited to talk about Root. Um, yeah, I will probably, I don't know, uh, maybe it might go into a every 10 games um, because I have a feeling uh, I have some some training maps or training matches to go through to get me ready to to really teach these new clockwork two factions as best as possible and i don't know if it's a long time i'll do five if it's uh, a time of a lot of root i'll bump it to 10 like i did this time so in any case thanks for tuning in and hope you get some good games in thanks for taking a pause to give pause and we'll see you next time bye